All right, what is another name for a 3D coordinate system? So we're going to be using x, y, z. We can also call it r times r times r, r cubed. So instead of writing 3D coordinate system. We'll go r cubed. So what's r cubed? It's r times r times r. So before, you dealt with r times r. But all we're going to do is throw in one more dimension now. So we got r cubed. So back in the good old days, you just had x, y. But now we have x, y, and z. I do not know why they went with this labeling of x going sort of out of the paper towards you, and then y going to the right, and z is going up. So I don't have a good reason as to why somebody chose this standard. The right hand rule, x. Y is your second finger, and then Z is your thumb. We'll get into the right-handed rule very soon, which is for cross products. <laughs> There's some reason they went X, Y, Z like this. <coughs> so let's graph one, two, three. Seems really easy. Go over one go sort of over two and then up three. So do your best, graph one, two, three. Of course it goes x, y, z. That's about my best attempt at graphing 1, 2, 3. So I try to go sort of down the x-axis, 1, then to the right, 2, and then up 3. Does that make sense? 1 down the x-axis, 2 down the y-axis, or I should say to the right on the y-axis, and then 3 up. Where I graph that point, it looks like maybe that's uh, 0, 1, 2 also, doesn't it? The problem is we're trying to graph three dimensions on two-dimensional paper. So I could actually pick a lot more points that, have, that would look like they'd be graphed right there because you can't see depth on your paper. So because of this, we're not going to generally graph very much in three dimensions. So, do you have some? I know we can just like push off. I know the people that can play like Peter, or I've got to the robotics, they have a bunch of that paper. Ah, all right. So, <laughs> so I'll just say hard to tell exactly which point we mean. So we're generally not going to graph in three dimensions. All right, so that should be enough to convince you there's at least some ambiguity as to where points are going to get plotted. You don't have this problem if you just have x, y. You just go over to the right a certain amount, up a certain amount, and that's it. All right, so we're going to generally avoid graphing. There are some very easy points to graph, though, that we could do. Let me Oh no. Perfect. Okay. So there's some easy points to graph. One, zero, zero. Zero, one, zero. Zero, zero, one.
These are the IJK vectors you've probably seen before. So these, and let's, I'll graph them in blue so they don't look like the points I was trying to graph before. The only reason you're allowed to graph these nicely is because they're directly on an axis. So it's not really ambiguous as to where they show up. So you just go, you know, I is the first one I did, J is down the Y axis, and K is up on the X axis like that. So there's your IJKs. Now once you leave the axis, that's where things become very ambiguous. So we're not going to try to graph too many things in three dimensions. So there are three coordinate planes. All right, x equals 0. That's your first coordinate plane. So think about x equals 0. How is that going to graph out? What plane is x equals 0, if you had to describe it? That would be the, you could say the YZ plane or the one that doesn't stick out of the paper. How about that? Think about X coming out of the paper. So this will be the actual paper itself, basically. So this is the, and again, it's really hard to draw these. So I'm just going to, man, what's the best way to do this? It's easier to describe it in words than it is to try to draw it. How about like that? That'll be the y, z plane. It's probably better to think about it as the equation x equals 0 than it is to try to draw it. Does decimal search do three-dimensional Maybe. I don't know. I haven't really messed around with it. I know if you own Wolfram Alpha, I don't know what the free one that we use online. I know it'll give you some graphs. But if you have access to the real deal, I think you can do some pretty good three-dimensional graphic and moving them around. And I'm sure there's a free 3D plotter online somewhere. T89 will do it, and I think it lets you rotate views. And I'm sure there's some websites that will do the same thing. All right, so that's x equals 0. We'll just go in order. y equals 0. How, what's a good way to describe the y equals 0? It's certainly going to be a plane. So what plane will the y equals 0 plane be? So that'll be the xz if we keep it alphabetical. So that's the one that's sort of vertically coming out of the paper. So this one I'm going to draw parallel with the z and the x-axis. So this is the xz plane right there. And I tried it. The yz plane should be parallel to the y-axis and the z-axis. So it goes vertical and horizontal lines to draw the yz. And then our zx uses sort of diagonal ones that match the x-axis. So last one, of course, z equals 0. So go ahead and draw your z equals 0 plane. Those are the three coordinate planes. Uh oh. That should be the, yes, xy. Now, if you union up all of these planes, I have a nice picture on my notes. I'll try to recreate it, but it will split the each one of these individually partitions three-dimensional space into two pieces. But if you put all three together, you actually get eight uh, pieces total. 
So let's try to write in the uh, three planes together. It looks much better on my paper. Oh, I know why. All right, we'll give this one more shot. Actually, let's use the internet. I had a really good idea who's in the engineering club. It's completely off topic. Walkers for old people suck. I was helping old people this weekend. And I was thinking, if you make a baby walker for old people. <laughs> well, so they get to like really walk, and then they can have their hands free. And whatever, yeah, they can carry stuff around. Anyways, I think that would be a really good engineering project. What's that? Well, you don't need so many toys, necessarily. <laughs> but I think some nice like rollerblade wheels or something, skateboard wheels in the bottom. Oh, I know some old people. <laughs> and actually, if you built it with enough support, you could probably get somebody with some leg, like in a wheelchair, but with some functionality around, which is really what I was thinking. If their legs aren't strong enough to hold their whole body, but they could move 20 or 30 or 40 pounds. Oh, yeah. Project of the year right there. No, it will be, but maybe somebody else sees it with more motivation and makes it. All right, where am I going? We're plotting stuff. Coordinate axis. I don't care about baby walkers. Oh, there's one. Here we go. That's what I was trying to draw. All right. Do you believe that it cuts three-dimensional space into eight sections now? I don't want to call them quadrants, but they're actually octants, I think is what they'd be called. So there'll be eight of them. All right, now you believe me. So that's what I was trying to draw. Is that oct octus? Octin? Octants? Octants? No. Is there an extra en in there? Octants? Okay. <coughs> All right. So let's look at some example regions. So before, all of our regions were in two dimensions. So everything we drew basically had no z-coordinate. So everything was just xy, even though it was either parameterized, polar curves, either way, they're all in the xy plane. So now we're picking up extra dimension. And if I go all out with point set notation, let's go all the way. So first example, sketch, and describe.
So all points with y coordinate zero or more. So no negative y's. So do your best to sketch out that region. I'll give you a big hint. y equals zero is part of it. So you can start out with our y equals zero curve right there, or not curve, our y equals zero plane. And you just have to tell me what part of that graph are we going to be using. So that'll split, basically split our space in half. And which half do you want to use? <coughs> So there's our y equals zero plane. And how would you describe the part we want to use? The left half. The left half. So the plane and, wait, sure it's the left half? Oh, right half. The right half. So the plane and everything to the right of the plane. Does that make sense? Yep. So you got the plane itself plus everything on the right. So how do we draw that? That's a little bit more tricky. I like to do something like this. So you got your plane and everything to the right of it. Now if you really wanted to be accurate, this plane goes forever every direction. Oops. So don't draw these second secondary arrows, but the plane goes all four directions forever. So that's too many arrows in my opinion. So I'm going to delete the ones that signify the plane goes forever. So we'll just leave it like this. So we've got the plane and then everything to the side of it, to the right. So describing, we'll say, to the right of the XZ plane. <coughs> so next one, sketch and describe all points that have a Z coordinate equal to 2. So sketch and describe all the ones of z coordinate equal to 2. So what's a good place to start from the planes we wrote above? Z equals 0. Z equals 0 is pretty close. How do you modify that? Just lift it up a little bit. Too pretty much it. Just lift it up. So sketch that out and then describe it in words. So it will be all points, two units above the x, y plane. So that's our x equals 2. So two conditions to worry about, x squared plus y squared equals 4. 
which could be x squared plus y squared equals 2 squared. And z is greater than or equal to 0. So z greater than or equal to 0, really similar to the first one, except which was y greater than or equal to 0. We just have a different coordinate. z greater than, greater than or equal to 0. What is x squared plus y squared equals 2 squared? Circle. Circle. Centered. At the origin with a radius 2. All right, do your best to sketch this out. I'll give you a minute. You can talk to your uh, classmates if you'd like. So if you're having trouble drawing this slanted circle, here's a hint. You're not actually drawing a circle. You're going to draw, what do you call it? I think you call it a sheared circle. If a circle is inside of a square, what you're actually going to draw is what would happen if you shift it, turn it into a parallelogram. Shearing, yeah. If you're an art, uh, into art terminology to call it shooting. There's probably other names for it too. Alright, so what I just did is I basically marked the four tangents around the circle. So it's a little weird. At the leftmost point, it's not going to be vertical. It's going to be at this parallel with the x-axis. So here we go. So we'll do what I would consider the easier parts first. So I'm trying to line them up so my tangents match the actual curvature of the circle right there. And I'm going to do the same thing down here. We actually have quite a bit uh, to quite a bit of curve in a really short distance. So this one's actually pretty steep. Oh, that's not so good. So there we go. That's a little better. Now we'll connect the two that are far away, and there's not very much curve on these two points right here, between these two. So we'll come out of that one, go about like there, and then come out of this one. Oh, it's beautiful. All right, so yours, I'm sure, looks just as nice as this. So I don't know how else to describe how to do that. You just practice. and. Take an art class that'll work too. It's probably a sketching class. I don't think you'll learn this in painting class. No, I'd like to get some cubism. Cubism? I don't think this is cubism. <laughs> All right. I. What equation or equations represent what I just drew? Certainly, x squared plus y squared equals two squared. There's another equation that also needs to be written down to describe the circle I drew. So, has to be or equal to zero. so what I drew, z is zero. So I have to basically take this and move it upwards. So it's okay for z to equal zero, but I want all the z's zero and more. So what I did is I drew the base of our cylinder. How tall is the cylinder? Infinite. So what I'm going to do, when I draw my cylinder at the top, I'm going to put some up arrows so, so I know it goes up forever. So this is the infinite chimney. So, 
So what you need to do is basically copy and paste this really hard to draw circle above and then connect it with some vertical lines. So let's pick where the vertical line should go. It should go on the left and the rightmost point, which unfortunately are not quite the ones on the x, y axis, or I should say on the y axis. So those are the two points there. Let's switch. I'll go to blue. So I'm just going to do my best to go completely vertical, parallel with the z axis right there. And then I'm going to hopefully oh, that's pretty good. Good enough. And I want to say it goes up forever. So I'm going to fill in some up arrows so we know this is going up forever. All right, questions? Could we also just put the up arrows directly on the base? Yeah, I'd probably be okay with that. I'd be okay with that, yeah, on this shape. I'm not really going to grade your drawings overall. They're just going to be for partial credit if you maybe couldn't do, if you could at least sketch the region out. Uh, maybe you couldn't do what I asked you to do on the region, but if you at least know what the region is and you can communicate that, that's worth a couple points. <laughs> In fact, I did exactly what you're saying right here for the uh, to the right of the XZ plane. Yeah, I didn't draw like a part of it over here. I just drew a cross section. So next thing we'll need is distance. All right, distance between. So in the good old days, Distance was square root So that should be super familiar Subtract your x's, subtract your y's, square them, add them together Pythagorean distance is what this is, or Pythagorean theorem is what it comes from What do you think we do with our z coordinates? That's it Just continue the pattern Plus Z2 minus Z1 squared, right there. All right, so now forget about the good old days. There we go. That's our distance. So you got the X distance squared, Y distance squared, Z distance squared, square root everything. So a sphere, we need two things for a sphere. We need a center and a radius. So using those two words, center and radius, can anybody complete this sentence? You can use other words too. A sphere is all points. So our distance will be r, the radius. So it will be all points, distance r. Better not have a zero or a negative radius. So, you know, positive radius or your. Well, you could go with zero. That's a sphere would just be a single point. We call it the degenerate case, where it's not really has doesn't really have sphere properties. Doesn't have inside. A sphere of solid point systems are from the center. I think we used H and K for the center before. Those aren't in order in the alphabet, are they? H, H, I, J, K, H, K. So if I use H and K, what should I use for a third letter? Let's go L. P, P would work too. Let me go H. I just 
feel like L belongs there. Yeah. J, K, L. At least that's ordered. All right, so this is the definition of a sphere right here. Circle is really similar, except circle, you just knock out one dimension, and you got a circle. What happens if I wanted a sphere in four dimensions? You just add another coordinate in here, either m or t for time, whatever you wanted to label your last coordinate. What if you're, uh, if you wanted to see you're still in well, if I use this definition, the question is exactly what are we dealing with? So you'd have to like look very carefully at the definition of a sphere. Um, depends on what book you read as to sh should it be in three dimensions. Some people call it like a hypersphere in four dimensions. Um, different things. And then there's also the hollow versus the filled-in one. So the filled-in one will be distance uh, of r or less would be filled in, versus the hollow one is just distance r. <coughs> so a sphere of all points is r from the center. So what does that look like? We could write that out. Uh, all points, of course, points are x, y, z. So we want distance of x, y, z, comma, h, k. No, your book goes x naught, y naught, z naught. Whatever. We're already going h, k, l equals, and this is equals r. All right, so I just turned our sentence into math. Distance from your point to the center is r. So distance is square root x minus h squared plus y minus k squared plus z minus l squared equals r. That's really ugly, so we'll square both sides. So that should be pretty familiar. That's the circle equation, except you have an extra dimension. So that is our sphere. So that is a good one to memorize. Well, you don't really probably need to spend much effort memorizing that. It's basically exactly like a circle. You just have a z. It's a good time to make sure your L doesn't look like your 1. If your L looks like a 1, I would go, I, I do the curse of L. But then you have to also make sure your cursive L is not going to turn into an E later on. Because I think you can see that's sort of ambiguous. So I wrote the sphere down in standard form. What type of form is this? x squared plus y squared plus z squared plus some x's and y's and z's and a constant. So I think we call this general form. So we're going to turn our general form into standard form. So how do we turn general form into standard form? What algebra tool? are we going to use? Complete the square. How many squares do we need to complete? Got to get an x completed square, y completed square, and z completed square. Which one do I not really need to do though? Y. So the y's completed square is already pretty much done for you. So let's write out in the right order x squared plus 3x. Now I'm going to do something a little bit silly. I'm going to go y squared plus 0y. So you can see the complete a square on y's plus z squared minus 4z. All right, I will complete the square on the y. So 
So that's completed on y. So I want you to complete the x square on the x and the square on the z. x is going to have a fraction. You can handle it. And I'll write really fast our rule about, it's not like a rule, it's an identity. So you should have seen this a lot of times, this completed square. So I don't want to go over it again. So go ahead and use that on the x's and the z's, and you should be able to collect your constants and tell me what the radius is. And hopefully it'll be positive. It's very easy to write down a negative radius sphere in general form. <coughs> so I'll give you a minute on this. Algebra questions. Minus three. minus three from minus four plus one. I'm just going to uh, combine all those together. What did you need to add then to the other side? Um, I thought I did. So we had zero on the right side, so I just added three in, which is 12 fourths and nine fourths it is positive 21 fourths. And then I square rooted that guy to get the, so we're not looking at radius squared, we're looking at regular radius. So make sure you take the opposite sign of what it looks like or you could think of what x value makes the first one zero, which is negative 3 halves. 0 for y makes the middle term 0. And then 2 for z makes the last term 0. So there's our center. Our radius is square root 21 halves. So that's as good as it will get for the radius. So our last example region sketch and describe XYZ <laughs> such that So we have a double inequality. 
Well, we really have three inequalities. There's a z greater than zero. What does z greater than zero correspond to on our graph? I think we did that before. There will be x, y plane and everything above. So one way to think about z greater than zero, I like to think of z equals zero as sort of the floor. So that would be like altitude zero or height zero, and then everything above that. So the floor plus everything above ground. Now, there's really two inequalities over here. There's the first inequality. So we got 1 less than or equal to x squared plus y squared plus z squared. And the second inequality, x squared plus y squared plus z squared less than or equal to 3. So let's go and look at the 1 less than or equal to x squared plus y squared plus z squared. What type of shape is this going to make? So we're in three dimensions. So it's going to be sort of sphere-like. If it was equal, it would be a sphere. So it'll be the sphere of radius 1 and what else? Inside or outside? Up. So it'll be radius 1 and everything bigger. All right, so we have our unit sphere at the origin and everything outside. Does that make sense? What about the second one? So this will be the sphere of radius 3 and everything inside or outside? Inside. inside. So on inside a radius 3 sphere, outside a radius 1 sphere. So this one right here will be outside radius 1 sphere. Uh, say that again? Would the z greater than or equal to 0, would that make it hemisphere? Yeah. So we'll basically cut that region that I just described in, we'll take the upper half of that region. So this is inside <coughs> sphere. And of course, you still have the word and. So you have to be simultaneously outside the small sphere, inside the big sphere, and z greater than or equal to 0, which means above uh, or on or on the x, y plane. So we're on the upper half, and then we're inside a radius 3 sphere, outside radius 1 sphere. So do your best to sketch that region. And I'll give you some help somewhere. I sketched a relatively nice radius 2 circle, which is should help you get started. So this is a pretty good place to start. You obviously want radius 1 or radius 3. So you make two of these guys, with one with radius 1 and one with radius 3. So that's a good starting point. So do your sheared circle. You actually need two sheared circles, so try to get two sheared circles. And I'll give you a minute head start, and then I'll catch up to you. You guys got the advantage here, so you can see my notes. <laughs> <laughs> It'll probably work out better if you if you don't look at them on purpose.
that's pretty good. I feel like I'm drawing a solar system with perfectly... Planets have like a weird orbit. What do they call that shape? It's not even quite... Some of them have an elliptical, but don't they have... Um, don't most of them have some orbit kind of like where one side's like way more pointed, like here's the sun or something like that? It's just because like the sun's not centered right in the middle. Yeah. I, astronomy's cool. I should know more. I don't. All right. So we're inside this region that I drew, but I didn't draw spheres, did I? Drew circles. So I have to basically sort of put a dome on each of these because I want the sphere above the uh, XY plane. So I'm going to do my best to put a dome on these. Oh, man. So that's where it gets ugly. I could have done a better dome on the second one. Uh, that's about as good as I can do. Right there. So you could think of this as basically a tennis ball cut in half, but it's super, super thick rubber. I think a tennis ball is a much smaller difference between the outer and the inner radius. So it's basically half a tennis ball that's super, super thick. Oh yeah, take a while to get through. <laughs> <laughs>